Uh, Salam, Aiden, and dear Mark. Thank you guys for 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 joining this session. It's a it's a special it's a special uh, session this evening, and it's special because we have a guest talk and um, uh, maybe to set the expectations uh, straight. It's going to be a very um, uh, discussion oriented kind of uh, talk, and we are going to talk with our very own guest, Charlene um, Wikali. Uh, who's um, uh, made time for us and she's an alumna of Batch 3. So she's going to share with us her uh, experience uh, with 10 Academy uh, during her time and how it was, basically how her experience was during the Academy and, and the benefits after that, basically the work life. So I would urge you to um, to seize this opportunity, as I keep on saying every day, seize on this opportunity to kind of learn, uh, ask as much as you can from her, learn a lot as as you can uh, as you can from her, because who knows? Maybe this is the only chance we got. Um, so maybe to introduce um, our guest speaker, I, I, I'm not sure I'll do this justice because of the terminologies that are involved here, uh, but I'll just um, uh, give it a go. And uh, yes, Charlene is a data scientist um, uh, who is serving or working at a licensed wave. Uh, um, it's a software, it's a software managing program. So she's a, she's a big firm believer of AI powered Utopia Society. And, and she's going to tell us more about what she does in those lines. I'm not trying, you know, why I'm staying away from all the technical words. It's because I, I, I want to make sure I do it justice. And especially that I'm a little bit green when it comes to the tech world. So I'm, 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 I'm very, yeah, I understand that sometimes we were discussing earlier on and I was asking I was asking the, the, the trainees because they're the tech people here. I was asking, so what exactly do you mean by internet of things? You know, there are those fancy words that are in tech worlds. Then I'm like, yes, for me, I can't understand and I'll leave it to the experts. So thank you very much, uh, Mwikali, for, for joining us and for making time. I know it's a, it's a busy schedule on your end. Maybe we, we, we're just going to have more like you're going to set the pace. You can just give us a brief description or, or you know, uh, um, a, a brief background about you and and uh, and your experience. Maybe that will set uh, a good pace. Then we'll open up the floor for the um, for the trainees to ask you as many questions as they. And, and I should promise you, expect a lot more questions from people here. All right. Okay. Over to you. Okay, so I'll be sharing my screen to go through this section. I hope you can see my screen. Yes. Uh, so for me, this has been my journey in the space. So I graduated an academy in October 2020. Then later in the year, I got my bachelor's degree in December 2020. And this actually gave me a good turn to actually go forth for my first uh, job, which I got through Ten Academy. It was at Urban Beta, so I was there for a while. And then I was at Prospect 33 during the same period. And during the same period, I started my master's. So I had a lot going on that I couldn't balance. So a few things dropped off the way. So currently, I'm at Licenseware. So what we do at Licenseware is manage software licensing. So that's what I majorly do at Licenseware in the data science department. All right, okay. Um, oh, so your presentation still goes on, okay. All right. <laughs> so this has been my journey so far. And uh, I'm going to highlight a few things that I learned during my time at Ten Academy and uh, things that I have come to use in the real world outside here. So you see, 
apart from the technical things I learned in Ten Academy, which were really great, I also learned other things like collaboration over competition. Because um, I guess when we started off with Ten Academy, uh, we had grades. I don't know that you guys still have grades. But we had grades and we were being graded like every other week. So it reached a point, personally, I'm very competitive. So it reached a point I was just thinking about competition more than actually learning, uh, collaborating. You learn more from collaboration. So it centers on communication, coordination and commitment. So it actually enables you to go further than you ever expected to. So that's one thing I learned during my time at Ten Academy that I love to highlight because uh, when you get into the real world, there's no grades and you're just trying your best to do your best. So this is where collaboration comes into play that you're not competing with the people you're working with. You're actually trying to collaborate to get the best result at the end of the day. And uh, another thing I learned during my time at Ten Academy was unlearning. So most of the times we're usually set up in our own minds uh, that you're kind of stuck in this time and space of where that knowledge existed to be true. So one thing you learn to do over time is that you need to learn and learn and relearn. So there's this quote that goes by, I'm not so sure who said it, but then it says that illiterate of the future are those who cannot, are not those who can't read or write, but those who can not learn and learn and relearn. So that's something big that I learned during my time at Ten Academy, how some things, you know, those things that you set in your mind since you were young, but then you come to a new space and you learn that, oh, things could be actually very different. So that's one thing I carry on forth in my day to day life. and always be open to the possibilities of learning anything from any situation. So another thing is comparison. So as I told you, I am a very competitive person. So comparison is literally the thief of joy because when you're comparing yourself to other people, then you never get happy with what you're achieving or where you're growing. See, the thing about growth is that um, Actually, the thing about life is that, I'll give you an example, something that stuck with me since I think I was young. And it's about how life is like an exam. But you see, the thing about this exam is that the paper that I have is different from the paper that you have. It's asking different questions. It's uh, focusing on different topics. And no one paper in life is the same. So you can't compare whatever you're doing with someone else because you're living different lives you yes you might be in the same profession but at the same time it's still different lives you're not the same person you know so don't compare yourself with other people you're very different and you're very good in being you you know like don't try and be anyone else because everyone else is taken so just be you so it also impedes on like your growth because Half of the time you're not thinking about, oh, how can I become better at this? These are my strengths, these are my weaknesses. How can I go to the next level? Most of the times when you're comparing yourself with other people, uh, you're just thinking about, okay, that's what they're doing. And you see at the same time, not everything works with everyone else. So you'll be like, okay, so since X so-and-so is doing this, then I should do it as well because it's working well for them, no. Focus on yourself and on your growth. If things actually end up lining up to be the same thing that uh, grows someone else, just that would be out of coincidence. It won't be out of you wanting to copy someone else. And um, another thing is ego. So you kind of need to let go of your ego as you go on in life. You, you don't always have to be right, you know? Uh, sometimes it's okay to be wrong. And actually, um, the other day, yesterday, literally yesterday, I was doing an examination paper on entrepreneurship and innovation. And one of the things uh, we were talking about in the whole topic is um, being able to realize that there's a dissonance between 
what is and what you want it or you expect it to be based on your kind of perception so that those people who are like okay this is going to work uh they'll be like they want to open up a human hair saloon in the middle of a rural center and they'll be like this is going to work yet you're looking at the amount of uh, income level for the area and it's really low but then in their head they're set that this is what is going to work so sometimes you don't always have to be right you need to also accept when you're wrong and learn from it you actually gain more from failures and learning about your failures than you get from being right like here yeah, you are right you learn something from it but then from failures you learn how to better yourself and i remember it's warren buffett who uh, talked about how he had an employee who was trading in the trading ground and he lost about 10 million dollars that's a lot of money so the guy felt guilty enough to go and say uh no i can't continue working for you i need to resign but then warren buffett actually just said that i have spent that 10 million you think you've lost in training you to become better at what you're doing so you see that sort of failure that normal people process as a very huge loss could actually be a stepping stone to making you greater so yes so for the ego just a disclaimer you need to make it strong and healthy before you let it go just don't let it go because it still kind of counts in life so yeah just don't always have the need to be right so those are the lessons i learned at my time at 10 academy and what i've learned in my career thus far and um, another thing i have learned in my career is when you're choosing a job that it's not in the slides now because i learned this today um focus on looking for a place that enables you to grow it's not really always about the money it's about the work you're doing it's about uh how you're growing as a person look for places whereby you vibe well with look for places whereby you are able to build yourself like they encourage for your growth so that's quite important as well so yeah that's been my experience so far unless anyone has a question yeah maybe before you kind of proceed from uh uh from that specific slide um you mentioned the point of collaboration the importance of collaboration there uh, uh maybe could you perhaps give us a practical example on the collaboration you learned over competition has practically helped you in the outside world and in practical sense how has that helped you in your work and maybe the second one it's on the comparison part you said there is no better person than you or better than you it's just you because other people are taken okay so it's just you need to be yourself so where where would you say is the boundaries between um you see like the way we look up to people and we get inspired by people so how, where could you draw the line between uh the the unhealthy comparison of yourself to others and you getting inspired and wanting to be you know looking up to someone and wanting to be i want to be exactly like uh like like mikali yeah okay so i'll start with comparison uh i think uh still yesterday i was going through a video that was talking about how teens in america are over 63 percent of the teens in america they're about 83 wait it was 83.33 percent of teens in america who are going for procedures in order to look more of their people who they admire so these are people whose facial structures haven't yet formed to their final form of whose bodies haven't yet formed to their final form so they're like okay this person on instagram is getting more likes than me so i'm going to copy exactly what they've gone for if they're going for a tummy tuck they're going to copy a tummy tuck if they're going for something else they're going to copy for it so not everything 
in like the IT tech space, not everything works for you. So I'll talk about in terms of learning. I have a friend who took, I think, two months off of school so he can just go and practice his craft and learn more. If I took those two months, I know myself, I will do nothing in those two months. I'm more of a person who learns with other people around. So him, he's a person who learns alone. So for him, that worked for him well, and he was able to become good at what he does. But for me, it wouldn't work the same. So if I decided, okay, I see that's what he's doing and admire the level at which he, at which he's reached at, therefore, let me copy everything that he's doing in order for me to reach that level. That won't work because you're not the same, but you're very different. So you need to just focus on yourself and be like, okay, this, are my strengths, these are my weaknesses, these are the opportunities I have around me, and these are your threats. So just do a sort analysis on yourself. And for me, mostly, I look at it with my end goal in mind. I'm like, okay, fine. What do I want to achieve at the end of this? And uh, in terms of career, like uh, currently I'm a data scientist, but that I'm in a space whereby I'm forced to do more software engineering. So I need to also look at myself and be like, okay, these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses. This is uh, the opportunities I have around me. And these are the things that may th threaten, like my end goal. But then at the end of the day, I won't go and look at someone else at work and be like, okay, they're doing well. Okay, what are they doing? Can I copy that? That won't work for you. So if they're starting, like, let's say they're starting at level three and I'm at zero, I can't go to three. I need to go. There's a progression in life. So you need to go to step zero and continue growing yourself from that point. And that's what I meant by comparison. Don't compare and copy paste what you get. And don't compare and feel that envy. <laughs> like, um, that actually is um, considered a new drug of its age the whole aspect of envy and wanting to be someone else that you're not. Um, so in terms of collaboration, I guess that was the other one. Uh, so I'm going to give an example in 10 Academy. As I said, when I came in, I was very really competitive. So every week I wanted to be at the top, I wanted to be at the top, I wanted to be at the top. But then I noticed this actually became detrimental to my grade itself my own mental health because I was not sleeping because I wanted to do more and at the same time we're all at different levels so we cannot try and do what other people are doing so you need to notice where you are and learn how to grow from there so for me collaboration came in when I used to see the weekly challenges and there were some things that I knew some things I didn't know I get in the same group where we were there's some people who know more of one thing that they might not know the other. So what you decided to do is that, okay, if we've gone through the classes, we've gone through everything, and still we're having that um, dissonance between uh, practice and theory, uh, we kind of get to like teach each other or learn from each other. So for me, I think uh, there was someone in my ear called Pachi Kojunde. He had like the best code that uh, the cleanest code, it looked nice, it was very modular, so it had all the qualities of good code. So what I decided to do is now go talk to that person and ask them, okay, this is what I've seen you're doing. How is it going? Like, uh, think about ways of which you can think about improving yourself by looking at what they're doing, uh, things that they also kind of consider as good practices, like modularity and kind of try and learn. Don't copy, learn. So, yeah. I, I hope everybody who's here is uh, getting those steps of modularity and that because I'm a little bit in the dark here, but I can see some hands up and um, whoever is willing to um, ask um, we call you any question, please keep your hand up then we will just, uh, we will just unmute and ask whichever question you have. So Didier, I can see your hand up. Do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Charlene, for for sharing the experience. Um, that, that was really helpful. And uh, I have one question. 
uh, you talked about unlearning and I uh, want to ask, <laughs> could you share like uh, what you had to unlearn, uh, which maybe you, you, you did unlearn and that helped you uh, during the academic journey? Thank you. Okay. I think for me, one thing I had to unlearn was bias and perspective. So for perspective, it was more of enlarging my perspective on even with people, when it comes to dealing with people, you don't come with one mentality of this is someone, if they do this, then if someone shouts at me, then it means that they're a bad person. No, you also need to look at where people are coming from. Not everything you kind of feel requires you to have an input into it. So that's what I had to unlearn and relearn. It was about perspective and understanding people that uh, sometimes like, I'll give an example on the road. Most of the times when someone does something on the road, people just get angry and start shouting. So for me, I came to learn that that person might be in their own world. They might have woken up in the morning with their own problems. So don't take it to heart. Rather, ignore that and continue with what you wanted to do. Focus on your objective more than the emotional aspect. So that's what I had to unlearn and kind of relearn about. So currently, even this is been a problem. So <laughs> currently, uh, I'll give an example of um, a while back. <laughs> Uh, so I know someone who used to come to work and that kind of personality kind of makes them want to take charge. Sometimes that makes you feel like uh, they want to control you and yet you're wondering what they to really control you but then you come to realize the position and where they're coming from and that they don't do it intentionally at times that sometimes it's just who they are or all they've ever known. So what you do as being self-aware of yourself, uh, you need to also learn other people and learn how to work with other people. So people is one thing that you will always learn and learn to learn about and also technology. So technology keeps on changing like every single day. Yeah. So you can't be stuck in the same mentality. You're like, okay, my plan this, um, in the next 10 years is to learn machine learning you see at the end of the day whatever you have set during that first year of saying i want to learn machine learning by the second year things will have changed you'll have needed to add more things reduce more things changed a few things here and there so you kind of need to continuously update yourself especially in the tech world with the new tech that's currently coming up how to use it um, like let's say I used to do PHP I unlearned that completely and now we're at Python so you just keep on progressing and growing yourself so yeah so also in IT you have to learn relearn and unlearn a few things so yeah yeah I can't agree with you uh, uh, like I can't emphasize on the part of um, understanding the art of people management because that's one of the skills that is um, that is very essential even in the outside world so it doesn't matter how 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 equipped you are technically or how smart you are technically if you are unable to actually work well with other people despite their personalities because at the end of the day you don't want to like you can't control other people's personality but um the art of learning how to to manage that is very key so you which we can learn from here and as you shared that it's something you also learned from here maybe as um do we have any other questions as we are waiting for questions from others i'm just yeah biniam you 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 just come next i'm, I'm curious on the aspect of you being a female graduate so we, we, we have we, we have a, a good number of, of female trainees. So pr perhaps would you mind sharing with us um, uh, you, as a female in, in, in this you know very male dominated space, how, how did you 
how did you make it through the 12 weeks and you know excel at it very well and what would be the tips that you give um maybe the female uh female trainees who are on this call in terms something that can help them succeed and utilize this space to the best uh, uh possible way yes okay so for me gender has always just been something that exists but not something i'm defined by so when it comes to thinking about myself in a space whereby it's mostly genetic like mostly dominated by the male kind of species um it's not something i ever thought about sadly but i noticed that what will keep us here is what we are it's more of mental what's in the head more well, that's to say uh so that's actually what you focus on not like your gender we're the same if your cut we all bleed red so you don't really think about yourself in the space as a woman or as a man because that's when you start uh division in like in the workspace now so that every time something happens it's just quite divided so i've never really had the whole idea of gender as labeling myself as a woman as a man it's just something that exists but it's not a definition of who I am. So yeah. No, that's uh, that's really powerful and from many people that I've uh, spoken to in in such spaces very male dominated spaces uh, that's one thing they have in common it's not about the gender it's at the end of the day it's about what you're able to offer your outputs and uh, and the merit that counts so i think that's a really good note for the females who are on this call it's at the end of the day it's about what you're able to offer it's about the merit um the work you put into it and it has nothing to do with you being female or male or others i know there's a, a point where they say male female and others so uh, being um being very uh, very cautious about diversity i'll include that so biniam uh, your hand is up so do you want to unmute and just uh, shoot your question i shoot your question okay thank you mary Mimikali, thank you for sharing your experience. It was really interesting. Uh, and having seen the workload this program requires, um, I'm really impressed you got through it, through it. So bravo on that. My question is, uh, was there anything you were struggling with when you were back in Tena Academy? What was your biggest challenge uh, during your stay in the program? And how did you overcome it? Okay. So I think for me the biggest challenge was the workload because I do agree with you it's a lot of workload but it's worth it. Uh I think a year two years later I actually realized that the workload that I did is what got me my job because it's what I used as a portfolio. So it's definitely worth it. So how I dealt with it was not quite healthy and now at least I learned that but then uh then I just did my best to make the to make it happen and it reached a point uh when we were focusing more on the skill and the insight kind of aspect of what you're going to produce rather than having it really done so uh it was just trying your best to just try your best so i think the workload was was really heavy for sure but then it's what gives you first of all good work ethic and it's what kind of keeps you going and keeps you learning and just go with it go with the flow it's going to be hard it's going to be tough but then that's life man <laughs> you have to just pull up your socks and try your best at it So how I managed to do the work was going above and beyond what was expected. I tried to divide myself in such a way that most of the sessions we had in a week were related to the work we were doing. So after a session I'll do a reflection and then do the work. So also kind of doing the work requires you to 
create time consciously and have deadlines for yourself. I always liked having my deadline two days before. So even though I don't meet it like that two days before, at least I'm able to reach somewhere that's really high and what's left is just winding up. So that's one thing that helped me manage as well as always getting the job done. Uh, so for me today, I learned from my personality type on the people who will do whatever it takes to finish the job. But then getting the job done is all that matters. So yeah, just you can do it. Trust me. Yeah, when you mentioned um, you know, trying, trying to have your uh, your deadlines two days before, there's some people who are already like two days before. It sounds a little bit too ambitious. So Arun, um, I can see your hand is up. Do you want to shoot your question? Then we go to y- y- Yida. Hi, Mokali. Hi. It's nice, to, it's nice to see you. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while for sure. Thanks for coming. Uh, so I wanted you to just comment on two things, please. So one is um, that in the world of work, um, do you find, well, maybe the first thing is, I think you were, you've were you been one of the best people we've ever had in terms of you bringing the community together. And um, do you have any comments or reflections on the value of getting to know other people in your patch and how that's helped you going forward? And the second is, as you've now uh, been working for, I think almost two years, a bit less than two years, or more than one year at least, um, you mentioned that the work that you did uh, as part of Batch 3 training was helpful to get you the job, but could you comment on to which extent did it prepare you for the work that you're doing now? Okay, so currently I'm working in a startup environment, which is very changing, it's very quick, it requires you to meet deadlines and it works on uh, scrums. So in Ten Academy, we kind of worked in scrums, which were like weekly scrums to kind of get uh, the deliverables out there. So for what I kind of do currently, it has helped me in terms of making sure I meet all my deadlines for sure. So I still have the same habit of making sure that my work is done before the deadline. But then now since our scrum takes about three weeks, I make sure the first two weeks I'm willing to do my top best to make sure most of the workload is done. So week three is just a finalizing and reviewing kind of week whereby I make sure everything works ideally. So, um, what else? I guess that's it for in terms of the work I did and how it applies currently. It also gives me a good work ethic for once. So yeah, I'll still have a good work, <laughs> work ethic. So not something good, I guess. Uh, so another thing um, is that I think during my interview we talked about different types of projects and my first job was at Upman Beta which was not heavily focused on data science but then I had done a bit of work here and there at Cosmic 33 and also uh, from Ten Academy so it kind of gave me the knowledge base so the work you're currently doing at Ten Academy is that they're not just you know when you were in school like normal formal education you used to be given assignments and uh you're given kind of replications of the test of what you have been taught but then at 10 academy we were being given this is the actual work you're going to do like in the industry so it wasn't just all theory and assignments which are related to the theory it was learning more about a working environment how people work how we should work how everything just kind of works i hope that makes sense in a in a working environment in an environment that uh like in an industry environment so that's what i'll say it helps in and uh yeah, I guess so. And community-wise, was it to what extent did the relationships that you made in your batch have they did they help you or do they help you? Um, community. I feel like at the beginning we kind of talked a lot, but now it's reduced. 
But then uh, from what I can say for me, what I do most is that uh, most of my friends around me are either hiring people or own businesses. So what I'll do is find someone through the Ten Academy platform who I know of because I would always recommend someone from Ten Academy. Like if I'm asked, do you know someone who does this? I'll be like, yeah, let me check out my Ten Academy kind of spectrum. So that's what the network kind of does. But then lately I've been so busy with school, so it's just been hard to manage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, very insightful. I can see Martin has his hand up. Do you want to ask a question now? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for the uh, for the insights and uh, just uh, for your experience. It's been good. Uh, we appreciate. Uh, also, you are taking your time off uh, so that you can share with us. Uh, the students at Ten Academy on how we can be able to excel while we get out to start working. So I had a question, uh, and uh, though it's a bit technical, uh, it's uh, concerning the use of uh, libraries. Uh, when you're working for, like maybe uh, at the place where you work, uh, are there points where you are asked to implement solutions from scratch? without uh, the use of libraries or uh, it's always always using libraries every day using packages there's no point in time where you are like uh, requested to do something uh, to craft a solution from scratch um i think for this i'll go with it depends on the work environment you're in or the type of job you have so uh, in Prospect 33, we did mostly everything from scratch. Uh, but then, of course, you won't be told to make something like Pandas or NumPy if it exists. So most of the times they don't aim to reinvent the wheel, they aim to create something new, something innovative, something that's never been done before. So that's when you'll be told to start from scratch. But then if it exists, you don't really have to start from scratch. If it exists and solves the problem you're trying to solve, you can actually use it. So that's one thing. Uh, currently at the company we have, um, at, sorry, we have a actual package that's been made to help development easier. So there's also those aspects, depending on where you land, that uh, actually good. But then as long as you get the basics from what you get from Ten Academy, you can survive in either environment. Awesome. I hope that question is well answered, especially that it's technical. I wouldn't um, be very much um, aware whether you're satisfied with that. But there's another question that uh, came earlier on on the chat box from Yididia. He was asking what what was your motivation to keep you going when it was hard to do so? So it's basically during your your time with Ten Academy. I think for me, it's about visualization. It's about thinking about the end of what this is going to help me achieve. So at the end of the day, you remember that you came here, you, you applied, you did the work you've come so far you can't come so far for you to just give up i remember when we used to go hiking there were points we used to face mountains like this and that's a point you start climbing up like this so you can't have gone through all that just for you to give up halfway so that's what i normally keep in my head that you can't just go back now you have to finish and for me it's just not about finishing like reaching the end line it's how i'll do it i'll do it with all i have because this moment that exists will never come back again this opportunity will never come back again they say opportunity knocks at your door once so you always have to seize it and always be prepared to seize it that is what i think also always be prepared to seize it so even though you feel like you're not good at what you're doing uh i was going to share in my next slides on stress management uh one thing i used to practice a lot was that anytime i had a bad thought this was 
during the period I was reading about the monk who sold his Ferrari. So I learned about something known as opposition thinking. So anytime I bought this bad idea or bad thought of myself of how I'm going to fail at something, I actually thought to myself, what if I succeed? What if I actually become better and do really well? What if I get the job I want? What if I can one day buy a yacht? So it's all about how you condition yourself. So that was my motivation personally. But as I said, everything works differently for everyone. So just try and find your own source of motivation. And even though you can't find it at that moment, what I highly suggest is just for you to fake it till you make it. So even though you're not motivated, just have your body, you must move. So that's one thing I normally do because it's always mind over matter. Okay, you mentioned that there's a second slide. Yeah, I think we, yeah we, we, we do have 14 minutes left. Maybe we can jump right into it then before before we run out of time. Ooh. Are you the okay? Okay, all right. Uh, I was told to give a small talk about stress management and um, we are going to start with something very really basic, which is stress, defining what it is. Uh, so stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension. So most of the times when people think about stress, they normally think it's just emotional. No, it's also physical. Uh, so there's no rule of thumb when it comes to dealing with stress. One thing you have to do is understand yourself. Know what works for you and what doesn't. So don't go looking for things that have worked with other people. Yes, you can use it as a sounding board, but then don't stick to it like the gospel. You can also go and look for what works for you. So also when it comes to managing your stress, you focus on your personal growth. So always remember that change takes Change and growth actually do take a lot of time. So it's not something that will happen instantly. Because even for me, myself, I'm currently continuously trying to make myself better, continuously trying to manage myself better, continuously trying to reach the next level in which I can reach in all dimensions of my life. So, yes. So these are like my three important steps to do every time I get stressed. So they're quite easy and I'll recommend you to do them. So when you stop and you realize you're stressed, you need to also realize what's actually causing you this problem. So try and connect your feeling tired or the pressures you're faced with where they're actually affecting. Sometimes people get headaches, sometimes people get um, brain fog is also a very big uh, symptom of a lot of stress so you also need to realize when it's also causing you a problem because stress is good to a particular point but then there's a point it becomes really bad for you so you need to stop at that point and realize yes this is actually a problem and it's something that needs to be worked on so number two you need to identify the causes of your stress so you need to identify the underlying causes of where your stress could be coming from. So like, let's say you have a deadline to okay, um, Tuesday. So your deadline is on Wednesday, the midweek deadline. We used to have a midweek deadline. I don't know that you still have it. So we used to have a midweek deadline and I mostly didn't reach them at all. But then, I think I did. Yeah, so we had a midweek deadline. So um, you need to kind of, so I'll be like, okay, I identify that tomorrow's deadline is causing me stress. So you also need to review your lifestyle. So the thing about stress is that you get a brain fog and you're stuck in this point whereby it's hard for you to rather be your best. And this being your best is going to actually cause you more stress. So it becomes a cycle. So you're stressed because you cannot do anything and then you cannot do anything because you're stressed. So the cycle keeps on going. So at that point, you also need to review your lifestyle. So you release the point at which the pressure is coming from and don't try to do everything at once. So you need to also break, break it down for yourself. So you don't end up uh, focused on the actual stressor 
you actually come to yourself because we went to stress and it's a feeling of emotion or physical tension and that's mostly to do with yourself it's not to do with like um someone else it's to do with you so you need to kind of come and do a introspect into yourself so the steps i'll suggest of dealing with stress is first of all you need to understand that anxiety is not your fault so this is actually mapped up from my own kind of experiences so yeah it's kind of like a footnote so it might not work for you so you can design something similar so that's that's based on who you are and based on your strengths as well so you also need to understand the power of your subconscious mind so oh sorry that's such a understanding that anxiety is not your fault so most of the times personally i am an overthinker so when i realize okay deadline is tomorrow i haven't yet done this is my fault that i haven't yet done because i spent the whole of yesterday doing nothing so you start having a blame cycle for some people and that blame cycle actually digs you deeper into stress uh, another step of understand after understanding that your anxiety is not your fault you need to also understand the power of your subconscious mind so the thing about stress is that um i feel like it's imagined kind of spaces so it's not something that's physical where someone is pinching you or slapping you or punching you it's something that exists majorly in your mind so it causes your whole body to tense and have your whole emotion system so tensed up. So you also need to understand the power of your subconscious mind. So once you actually understand this power of your subconscious mind, you're able to discover a positive self-concept. So how do you apply a positive self-concept in everyday life? You need to be positive. I see this is going to sound interesting because uh, in Tan Academy during my time, I was known for waking up every morning and sending everyone a positive, encouraging message. But at that time, I was feeling the lowest of my low. So I was just, it was not working out for me. So I just decided, okay, fine. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fake it till I make it. So I was like, what, I'll, what I think I can do is encourage other people and maybe in the process of encouraging other people, I'll get encouraged by myself. So I kind of created this positive space around me that I hoped that the people around me would be positive and somehow it would trickle down to me being positive. And weirdly enough, it somehow worked to some extent. So uh, after you discover your positive self-concept, you need to love to how, how to learn and parent yourself. So by parent, this is what, uh, by parent, what I mean is, uh, you know how parents will see a child doing something and be like, stop that, that's not nice for you. Or they see a child trying to touch the hot stove and they actually hit the child. So from time to time, you need this to do this for yourself. So you need to stop the habit of negative thinking. And for me, what worked well during my time at the academy and what I work well, with well right now is just shifting to excitement. So I can be in that whole bad kind of space whereby I'm thinking all negative about myself. And this is where also opposition thinking comes in. So I'll be like, I'm not good at this job. But then I think about a project that's coming up that I'll be doing that really excites me. And my whole mind is literally changed from what I was thinking about myself and my kind of current situation to actually thinking about something else that kind of motivates me. So always look forward to the future that kind of motivates you. So don't be stuck every time you reach a point whereby you're just feeling or you're dreading what you're currently going through. Shift your mind, try and think about the positive thing. Like let's say after you're done with 10 Academy and you get your gym job, let's say why do you want to get your gym job? Personally, I pray to God for a remote job and I got it so that I can travel and <laughs> I just got it. I realized the other day because it's something I hadn't realized for a while. So kind of shifting my 
mental state during that time from thinking about what I'm going through to thinking about the possibilities and the good results that I'm going to get from what I'm going through. So that's also something that worked well for me. And uh, number five, we're going to talk about to start caring for yourself. So you need to be gentle with yourself because you're also, I like using this term because we use it a lot in Kenya. So you're like baby girl or baby boy. So just baby yourself as well because no one else will baby you this life. So you rather just do it for yourself. So to this, you need to reframe your thoughts. Every time you think about yourself, most of the times you think about, mm, this is not so well about myself. What I like doing is reframing that thought about something not being good. Think about the positives of it. Like, let's say, uh, I feel like my hands are too small, but then they could be able enough to actually perform a surgery. So that may be a good thing. So you kind of reframe your thoughts. Every time you get a negative thought, do the opposition thinking and think about all the positive things that could come out of it. Reframe uh, any thought that creeps up into your mind, reframe it. Also, number two, eliminate your triggers. Eliminating your triggers are like you notice, yes, my deadline is tomorrow, I haven't yet finished this. But then for the next time, remind yourself that you don't want to go through that cycle of stress again. So you're going to eliminate that stress trigger by making sure you finish your work on time, by going and figuring out how to go above and beyond. Um, decide that you won't go uh, spend your time uh, doing something else while you could actually be finishing your work. So kind of try that, kind of look forward and try and avoid situations that would make you stressed. And then uh, the last thing is to sell yourself to yourself. So always wake up in the morning. This is like an interesting and very weird thing to do. So when you wake up in the morning, I want you tomorrow to actually smile at yourself. I want you to look at yourself and laugh for five five minutes straight. You don't really have to laugh about something, just start ha ha ha. You'll find yourself laughing with time. So what this does, it creates a positive self in yourself. Like it creates the positive, um, what do you call that? called en endomorphs. <laughs> the positive kind of vibes in yourself. We're going to go with that for now. So that actually helps you get into that space. And then once you're in that space, sell yourself to yourself. Tell yourself how you're very good at X, Y, and Z. I told you, remember to do a sort analysis of yourself. Tell yourself about how, yes, you have this weakness, but you know what? The next time you're going to be saying it's a weakness, you're going to be saying it's something that you're good at, that you're going to learn and you're going to become the best at it. So that's how you kind of reframe your thoughts and kind of sell yourself to yourself. So from this, I'm going to talk about two practices. So we have the heart of the rose. So think about a garden. And this garden is a rose garden. So in this rose garden, imagine if every day you took a bucket of water and it was full of sewage water and you decided that's the water you're going to use to water the roses. So at the end of the day, the roots of the roses will actually rot and the whole plant will die. But then if you close your eyes and imagine for a second, what if you fed this rose garden some clean, fresh water from maybe a nearby river that's flowing from the mountains? You know, that's a water that's come directly <laughs> from the source. So you, you'll notice that the flower starts flourishing and becoming better and digging its roots deeper to become more productive. So that's your mind. The rose garden is your mind. And this water that you're feeding it is all this input that's coming from your external surroundings to that specific point in time to your mind. So like if I wake up every day and I'm on Instagram looking at the latest new trend or anything, that's waking up and feeding your mind with garbage water. But if you woke up every morning and motiv looked at the motivational sites, looked at learning something new in the morning, because when you wake up, your brain is like really fresh and it's your time to actually uh, 
kind of cultivate this positive and motivational sphere around you. So most of the times the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your thoughts. So if you wake up in the morning looking at, at Instagram, your head will just be on Instagram the whole day. But then if you wake up in the money in the morning, sorry, and you think about something motivational about how you're going to go and be the greatest uh, data scientist there ever was, or how you're going to go and do something, that thought is going to stick with you through the day. So your mind can actually hold one thought at a time. So if you focus on the Instagram thought, it's going to manifest in you and eat at you. But then if you wake up and focus on this positive thought that you have of yourself, it's actually going to make you flourish. So you'll be better at envisioning your dreams or trying to cultivate your dreams into reality. So you need to occupy your mind with uplifting thoughts, not things that tear you down from within. And the other thing is opposition thinking that I've talked about. So you need to be aware of replacing negative thoughts with present positive ones. So this is very important. Every time you think about something negative, and I can't emphasize on this more, always think of something positive. So like, let's say you're stressed and, um, sorry, let's come back here. Yeah. Step number three talks about reviewing your lifestyle. So this is where you have some few tips that I can give you. So one thing you can do is exercise. So exercising is actually when one of the best ways to relax your body and mind. So most of the times, you, if you focus on dancing and shaking yourself, I once learned during yoga that most of the stress and energy and tension that we hold, we hold in our kind of hip section. So in terms of relaxing muscles, the last one, in terms of stretching, I'll focus on stretching certain aspects of myself so it can actually release that tension. So also you can relax your muscles through enjoying a massage or taking a hot bath or shower or getting a good night's sleep. That actually works. Some people actually feel better if they stop everything they're doing, go to take a small nap and then come back at it. So another way to, to like deal with your stress is that when you're, let's say you're focusing too much, you come to notice that you're kind of losing yourself in the work. So you need to also make time for your hobbies. And this is something I'm trying to... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> so this is something that I'm trying to incorporate in my life as much as possible mm -hmm. so you also need to set time aside for the things you enjoy so that's quite important because it helps you get your mind off the things that you're stressed about and another thing you should do is to eat well so eating a regular well-balanced diet will help you feel better in general and it also helps you improve your mood so that's something you should always try and focus on. And um, what I normally like telling my friends, because we're in a space whereby we're majorly used to take out. No one is willing to enter a kitchen and try to cook from scratch because you're too busy trying to code to actually enter the kitchen and look for something to cook or eat. So this eating of junk is the same way as the mind aspect we talked about. You can't feed your body you know your mind is what you're using to work with so if you feed it junk you'll end up slowing yourself down and you won't be as productive as you thought so always aim to feed your body when you when it comes to eating one thing i learned is that you need to eat with intention so you eat vegetables you eat fruits so those are things that are actually feeding your body and uh, another thing is taking a deep breath so stopping and taking a few deep breaths can literally make you feel the best afterwards. So um, I think I'll come back to that at the end. 
And another thing you need to do is to take a chill pill. So in this life, we have everything that's moving around us. It's quite fast. We're in a very fast-paced world, especially being in developing countries. So you also need to realize that this is just going too fast, that you need to slow down and take a chill pill. So most of the times, um, with my friends, you know, when we get sick, we actually go like, yeah, this was required for us to actually relax and cool down our minds so we can go back into the world. So during this time, you need to kind of practice mindfulness as well. Uh, be more intentional with yourself. Most of the times we are usually going through a flow. We are not realizing everything else that's going around us. So slow down and practice mindfulness. Be aware of everything you do and be intentional of everything you do. So I guess I'll stop there and we'll talk about the deep breathing more intimately. So um, maybe if you're here, I'd like us to do a small practice and um, everyone feel comfortable enough to join. So at the end of my day, to kind of release the stress that I have built up in my body, I actually sit down. So we can all sit down wherever we are. I don't know if many of you are standing. So sit down and start the practice by closing your eyes. So everyone, wherever you are, close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And out. So we're going to start this by imagining you're sitting on top of a disc. And this disc is this white disc. And we're going to try and picture it going from the bottom of our feet to the top of our heads. So we're going to start this practice. And every time you take a deep breath in, you're going to imagine the disc kind of coming up and then as it's coming up, it's collecting all the tension and all the stress and all everything that you felt during that day to kind of renew yourself for the next day. This practice worked for me, but I don't know if it worked for you. But we learned this uh, during my time at Ten Academy, so we can just start slowly. So everyone, wherever you are, if you want to do this practice with me, just close your eyes and Take a comfortable seated position wherever you are. So we're going to be taking breaths. So you breathe in for a count of five, hold for a count of two, and release for a count of seven. So during this process, you're going to imagine the disc coming up, carrying everything that has been of a pressure to you during the day, everything that feels like it's just bad vibes that's in you. So you're going to start breathing. So one, two, three, go. So we're going to start one, two, three, four, five. Hold for one, two, three. And release for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the disc would have moved up and settled at a point. And on top of it, it's carrying something that has made that part of your body tense, that is making you feel a certain form of stress. So we're going to go again, second time for one, two, three, four, five, hold for one, two, three, release for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So currently my disc is here. So normally at your, you, this area is carrying most of the stress and your hip area is carrying most of the stress. So you need to focus on releasing the stress from there. So you breathe in one, two, three, four. You hold for one, two, three, Release for one, two, three, five, six, seven. So when the disc gets to the top of your head, 
you can imagine yourself cleansed of all the negative vibes, all the negative thoughts, all the stress you had from the day. And as it's seated above your head, you're going to imagine it past and everything that it was holding turns into positive energy, turns into uh, positive vibes. So all of that positivity raining down on you. So yes, that's the end of our practice today. And that's all I had for the session. And tomorrow when you wake up, please, please remember to do the positive kind of thing in front of a mirror. Take a minute to smile at yourself. Take five minutes to laugh with yourself. And take five minutes to tell yourself why you're amazing. Thank, thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. That was powerful. I hope you guys were able to do the exercise and you can be able to tell us maybe we can uh, bring this chat back to Slack on the experience with the exercise that she shared with us in terms of relieving uh, stress. So it's mainly about listening to your body and understanding how your body feels each part of it. And I, I think that's the most, um, the essence of this particular exercise. And um, yeah, I would encourage you guys to try it, whoever it works for, good for you. But at the end of the day, I think the bottom line uh, is that we ought to find what works for us. We are different people with different personalities, with different interests. So um, you understanding yourself better and understanding what for, works for you, it is, it, it is top of the priority as you try different exercises to see what works for you best. So I think I'll take about, we are way uh, past our time, but I can take one question if anybody has any question regarding to stress management or else we would get more questions via Slack, then we can uh, uh, we can try to reach out to Shilin for responses on this. So is there any question? I'll just give um, about five seconds. If there's no hand up, then I'll continue to closing with a vote of thanks. Okay, so four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Okay, that, that was just in my head. <laughs> anyway, um, so thank you very much, Shirley. So I don't know if uh, Everest is, is uh, still on the call or anybody who's willing to give a vote of thanks, a 30 seconds vote of thanks from, um, from the trainees. Anyone, you can just raise your hand and, you know, a quick vote of thanks. I don't want to be the only one, me and Shalene saying everything and preferably a male. We've had a lot of female voice. So I think preferably a male who can give a vote of thanks. Anyone? As in to unmute, not like, uh, not like the text, to unmute and kind of give a vote of thanks to Shalene. Maybe let's have one from trainees. It will be great. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually waiting one from the trainees. Or else I'll just call upon somebody okay. who was... Um, oh. Yeah. Okay, Rafa, there you go. Yeah, it was really nice. Even that uh, my connectivity was just going back and forth due to power outage. But yeah, I just get the sense of... Uh, your presentation of the stress and i'm really thankful for that thank you awesome thank you. Oh, awesome thank you very much Shalim. and hope maybe in the near future we'll have you again for a lot more insights i think we need a lot more motivation to get through the 12 the 12 weeks and i think after this section we we fueled up enough i bet we fueled up enough for the next uh few weeks and the next few challenges so unless there's uh anything else from your end uh that's uh, where we end this session and i wish you well with your job and and to everybody a good night good evening um you know happy dinner depending on where you're calling us from thank you so much oh tendis no 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 it's time up 
it's time up so we can keep the conversation on the chat and the chat box bye guys bye thank you for having me yeah bye